Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Ah, get this off. It's too warm for a leather coat. Right. Might as well enjoy the weather while I wait for the welding. Shouldn't take that long, should it? I'm bored now. Jean's back. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. Alright, just... It's really heavy. Welcome back to Project Daily Drive. And yes, Gene is back after two months. Yes, I did say two months. Oh dear. Right, so we're going to be talking about the car. So I want you to cast your mind back to last episode when we last saw the car. She was up on a ramp at Morris Millennium uh, and they were having a look at her. And in the two months since... Uh, Things have happened. I want you to remember what I said last episode. I very famously said, uh, the car is being done to what you might call MOT standards. It's not being restored. Uh, I did say that, didn't I? And uh, boy, was I wrong. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Today's video is going to be a talky video where I explain what's happened. Just thought I'd let you know ahead of time in case that's not your thing. So, yeah, get yourself comfortable because uh, there's a lot to go over here. I'm going to get myself a chair. Hope you got a brew ready because uh, this is going to be a nice long chat. I'll be putting photos and videos on screen just so you know what I'm talking about because it's going to be a nice long one here. So, when the car left, uh, there was a number of jobs which I knew needed doing, and I explained them in the video. These jobs were primarily the passenger side chassis leg needed replacing, driver's side sill, the driver's side inner wheel arch on the front, the passenger side flitch plate, the door panel, the rear chassis legs, inner wheel arch at the back on the driver's side, and maybe a bit of work on the floor. That's what I thought needed doing. There's no point trying to get around it. Everything underneath this car needed attention. But first, let me explain Morris Millennium. They're a specialist in South Manchester who did the work. And I'm going to say it here and now, phenomenal group of people, phenomenal company. I'm going to be taking the car back to them in the future. Their name is even on a sticker, proudly displayed on the back of my car. They did a phenomenal job and they were super duper brilliant throughout. You know, they, were, they communicated well, let me know everything, told it to me bluntly, everything I needed to know. And they were a really good company. I will be going back there again. In fact, I'll talk about later in the video stuff that I'll be taking the car back to them for. So when I had the car, they took it up on a ramp and had a look at it and then uh, told me, there's a few more jobs that I'll need doing. The passenger side still was actually so thin if you hit it with the hammer, a hammer went through it. So stuff like that. It's actually when they started cutting the metal out uh, to do repairs that kind of it came to light just how bad things were. The car was bodged like you would not believe. Well, you would believe you saw the video, but I think to an extent that was astonishing. The whole car was twisted and everything was out of alignment all the panels have been made to fit a, a wonky vehicle and there were some belters in this car uh, in terms of bodging a few examples would be when they actually put in the new chassis leg on the passenger side the old chassis leg on the driver's side sat an inch lower because it was bent like a banana 
and that's where the suspension attaches to so that's worrying uh, the floor on the passenger side floor was about an inch thick and it was four layers it was like that because uh, of overplating i'll talk about overplating in a moment there was some expanding foam on the rear chassis like that went through the entire thing it was building expanding foam that they had to rake out before doing any welding because otherwise it would have caught fire and you can't really put that stuff out it was bad we agreed uh we spoke and communicated a lot and basically the agreement came was that if it needs doing do it because this is my daily i drive this every day uh well not the moment obviously but when it's done and back on the road it's going to be my normal car it needs to be safe um and we talked it out and it turned out everything was very bad and needed doing so yeah overplating was the cause of the problem you see it wasn't just the rust it was the fact that everything had been overplated now overplating is the car world's version of sticking a bit of duct tape over a crack it is the worst example of repairing basically imagine you have a rust hole in the floor you'd cut it out and they'd put in a new panel that's the proper way of doing it overplating you just weld another panel on top of it to hide the hole and then it'll go through an mot there was places where it had been overplated two or three times the cross member the original cross member was hollow because the original cross member had rotted away and had been plated either side and underneath it was so bad throughout the entire car and things were out of alignment the engine for instance i've never been able to use the starting handle i thought this was crash damage because the engine sat slightly higher at the front no what happened was the floor had been so badly repaired over time it sat an inch lower down than it should do and it would have fouled the prop shaft so somebody, some phenomenal mechanic, put a different gearbox mounting cross piece in that made the gearbox sit lower. Basically tilted the whole thing so the prop shaft would go underneath the floor. And the gearbox stays, the actual mount stays, were sheared off. There wasn't a bit of this car really that was salvageable underneath. There was actually, I can count them, the tie plate on the passenger side, the boxing plate on the passenger side, the floor underneath the rear seats and most of the boot floor. Everything else had to be done. It was so horrendously bad and it's all been done to a very nice standard. I've also got brand new brake lines all throughout, a brand new hydraulic switch for the brake lights, stuff like that just to, you know, it's sake of safety that's been done the driver's side inner wheel arch was a particular one i knew it was full of filler turns out there was straight up nothing there it was so bad i believe that they had to put in 17 different pieces to build up a new arch um in that corner because it was that bad but it does look really good now you can barely tell that welding was done so I am happy. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, say how many parts were done. Because uh, it's painful to count them out. <clears throat> I'll take a drink quickly. It's going to be a long old list. Here we go. Front engine cross member. Passenger side chassis leg. Driver side chassis leg. Driver side tie plate gearbox mounting cross member flitch plate on the passenger side flitch plate on the driver's side driver's side in a wheel arch driver's side sill did i say passenger side sill probably not but i'll add it anyway driver's side floor front driver's side floor back passenger side floor front passenger side fr uh, floor back passenger side rear spring hanger driver's side rear spring hanger and two corners of the boot driver's side inner wheel arch at the uh, back i'm pretty sure there's one more but yeah there was a lot done uh 
I can't show you right now because I don't have ramps, but I did actually film some update videos. I wanted these to come out on uh, here weekly of the update because they let me go, Morris Millennium let me go down there weekly to have a look at the progress on the car. Um, I never actually ended up releasing them properly because that, some of them I weren't happy with. So here is the edited version of several of the update clips so you can have a look at the state of the underside of the car. And when you get back, we can talk about where we're going from here. Because uh, a fair bit needs doing. Have fun. So, uh, a bit of a quick update. This is the car halfway through the work. As you can see, brand new chassis leg, completely straight. Tie plate's been cleaned up. A new cross beam in here with brand new gearbox stays because they're just sheared. I didn't realise that, but say it had. Uh, the floor was so bad and out of alignment that they just had to give up and put in a new one. Um, same here at the back, brand new floor. Um, the sill base has been done once again. The uh, the circle bit here is it's okay, so that stayed. Uh, there's no base of the sill. If you look up there, it was full of expanding foam all the way along that they had to rake out because if they tried to weld it would have caught fire and the car would have gone up in smoke. Uh, they had to replace the cross member because it was so out of alignment that uh, it just threw everything else out. So it had to replace it with a new one, uh, which is now in place and it's been tacked in. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be rock solid once it's done. It's amazing. This, the gearbox tunnel was that far out. Uh, it's brilliant, and this is kind of halfway through. The thing I should show you is this is my car. All of this is what they've ripped out. This bag is, that's quite heavy. That's all the expanding foam they've raked out from the interior of the car. That's the original cross member. Have a look how many repairs are on that. Three layers thick in places. It's completely rotted out. That tissue paper. I'm going to keep that because that's hilarious. There's look how many layers thick that is. It's just shot. So the car's actually going to be lighter once this work's done because it's no longer going to have layer upon layer of rot. There's the cross member. As you can see, you can see the original cross member in there, but the rest of it has been cut out. It's too too far gone. Uh, this is why you get professionals to do it, because professionals know what they're doing and are actually fixing my car properly. Once it's done, it's going to be rock solid. But uh, yeah, there's more of the car on the floor. It was really bad. I Much worse than anyone thought, first thought, but these guys are the best. The, the quality of work, I mean, you can see it, it's just amazing what they do. Just the amazing quality, everything's straight, everything's in alignment, brand new bolts, new stays, everything. Yeah, it's, a, it's a proper job, that. Proper job. Bet that wasn't very nice viewing, was it? But yeah, that was uh, the underneath of the car. So, let's talk about what needs doing on the car going forward. Obviously, the most noticeable change, the grills change colour. Now, I do have the original grille. It's currently in the back of the car and the reason it's been changed is because it was rotted out completely at the bottom. You'll recognize this grille because it actually popped up in a previous video in the wiper rebuild. Uh, this was fitted because it's in better condition and you know honestly the colour is not that bad all things considered. Uh, it could be a lot worse and what's that music? Oh no! <laughs> You're all so mean. All serious mockery aside, I am going to change it. It's actually going to get repainted. It's in better condition than the original. I'm going to repaint it. I'm going to see if I can colour match it, but if I can't, I might just paint it black so it kind of blends in a bit better. Uh, there's no point trying to really put a lot of effort into the paint because it's so faded and scratched up. And I'm planning on doing a repaint in the future. Uh, speaking of that repaint, Let's talk about welding. 
again. You're going to be sick of hearing about it, aren't you? In terms of structural welding, everything's been done. This car doesn't need any more structural welding. Everything underneath is new. It's basically a new car underneath. But there is still rot present. Primarily, the arches. You can pretty obviously see this side's worse than the other side, but they're bubbled up. There's filler. They're not very good. Uh, on the inside, it's actually worse. There are holes that are filled with uh, sealant to stop water from getting in the boot. Now, they're not going to fall off. They're nowhere near that. I can yank on them all day. Not a problem, but they do need doing, and they're going to have to come off at some point. Now, my original plan was to go to the Morris Minor National this year, which obviously got cancelled, and pick up a pair of rear wings and a front wing, because one of them's also shot. But that obviously didn't happen, so I'm going to hopefully pick up a pair of wings at the back and one at the front next year and get those fitted. There is also a bit more welding. The bottom of the rear windscreen and the corner in the front windscreen, they've got bubbles and you know that there's rot there that's going to disintegrate if I take them off. Also, there's that hole on the passenger's rear window that we found in the SEALs episode. They're all going to get done as well. I'm going to be taking the car back to Morris Millennium because, well, they did a phenomenal job on the underside. They can do the rest of it. Uh, but there is a few other welding jobs. The bottom of the boot lid here and the bottoms of the doors have rusted away. This one's full of filler and there's holes in the bottom of the doors. I'm going to be doing those because, well, I can say I've done some welding on the car. Technically speaking, I am a qualified welder, a newly qualified welder with no experience in sheet metal, but it's something I would like to do and you all can join me with that. And then once all that's done, I'm going to repaint the car. Oh, that'd be nice to have a shiny car. It was shiny actually once. Uh, I did polish the paint, but I lived for an entire year next to a construction site and the car had concrete dust on it all the time and it's gotten faded again. Yeah. But you see, these are future plans going forward a long time. But what about the short time? Because I know that a lot of people would like me just to stick a pair of headlamps on, uh, put the driver's seat back in and take the car and drive it away. And technically speaking, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. But here's the thing. The underneath of the car has been completely rebuilt properly. And right now, life's kind of on hold. I do have a job now, but it is walking distance away from where I live. Uh, and nothing's really happening. All my holidays got cancelled and nobody's really doing anything for obvious reasons. So... Uh, I might as well spend the time to get the car right. Yes, we are going to be restoring Gene the Morris Miner properly. Now, there isn't too much that needs doing, but uh, there are quite a few jobs, quite a few big jobs. So let's go through them in no particular order. And uh, yeah, let's see how many things you're going to be seeing me do very, very soon. Such a long list. Right, let's get the big, bad, nasty, awful job that I'm dreading the most out of the way first, because it's a bit of a beast, this one, and it's this. This absolute disgrace is the wiring loom. You can see just from this video, it's held together with insulation tape. There are brakes all the way along it, it's really bad, and uh, I have to replace it. The whole thing. You see, if it was just one or two places that it had problems, that would be fine, but it's everywhere. There are breaks in the cable all over the place. The rubber insulation is cracking. The uh, cloth has rotted off completely. It's a nightmare. It's a mess, and it's been bodged by multiple people, including myself. I've done it as well. Uh, it was the point where even the expert said, look, just get a new one. So that's going to be a fun one. I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, one thing I will be doing, I will be getting a custom loom. I'm not going to get a bog standard stock loom because, number one, I have an alternator in here. Uh, so I might as well get a loom with an alternator. But also I want to put in a few different mods, including hazard lights, front spotlights and fog lights. 
So I might as well have provisions for all of those put into the wiring loom, even if I'm not going to fit them for maybe a year or two, just so that it makes life easier going forward. So we're going to be getting a nice custom loom, and then I'm going to be fitting it. That is going to suck. Uh, but there are a lot more jobs that need doing. I would like to have a cutoff switch for the battery for when I'm working on the electrics in the future, because unbolting the earth strap constantly is a bit of a nuisance, and I hate doing it. I also need to rebuild a carburetor. I've been saying I wanted to do a live stream, but it turns out that my computer won't have any of it. So we're going to be building it on a, uh, on a separate video. Rebuilding a carburetor. The engine needs some work as well. The tappets needs working. And also I've got a blocked breather. The crankcase breather is blocked, which means that when it's running up to temperature, it spews oil a bit out the back. So I need to do that one. Uh, now let's have a look at the interior of the car, because this is where it gets more fun. I am sat very precariously on the driver's seat on the passenger side, because it's not attached to anything. And if I lean back too far, I'm going to fall. Hopefully the acoustics in here aren't too evil. I have a nice shiny new metal floor. But here's the thing, I'm not supposed to have a nice shiny metal floor, I'm supposed to have carpets. So I'm going to be fitting some new carpets, I'm actually going to make my own. I'm going to make my own interior because the only salvageable bits from the interior were the rear seats and the door cards. The door cards weren't original, so I might as well make everything new and make it better. So I'm going to have original looking, but better interior. I'm going to make that all by hand. So that should be a fun one. Believe it or not, I actually know my way around a sewing machine. I don't think I'll need a sewing machine, but you never know. Also, I'd like to repaint some parts in here, like the gear stick and the brake, because that's full of rust. And then there's the heater, which I hate, and it's terrible, awful. Uh, I'm going to rebuild that, because apparently a fully rebuilt heater actually does work. So it'd be nice to have a decent heater. Uh, I want to replace the steering wheel, but I'm going to do that in the future. I just want to get this car on the road. Uh... I'm also going to be doing some messing around with the boot, but that's going to be, once again, later down the line, when the car's actually on the road. Oh, I have a lot to do here, don't I? Don't worry, there's even more! Right, behind this wheel is a wheel hub, and it's leaking oil. Uh, I can't really show it you from here, but there is a leak, and it has contaminated the rear drum. So I need to strip that down and replace the oil seal. Some people have told me it's a nice easy job, some people have told me it's the worst, so I'm terrified. I also need new rear tyres because these are full of cracks and wouldn't pass an MOT. Because I'm going to be putting this car through an MOT. That terrifies me. But I believe that's everything for now. I'm almost certainly... Oh, I am forgetting something. The very nice people at Morris Millennium uh, did something for me. They, well, they got some paint mixed up, which actually matches the paint for touching up in places, which is very, very nice of them. The bumper has been repainted, and the few places where the welding actually went on the visible body have also been repainted. But they also, because I asked them very nicely, wrote me a list of jobs that they would recommend. So... <laughs> I'm terrible at reading. Uh, here's the list. Check rear brake and shocks. Check over brakes. Sorry, check rear axle and shocks. Check over brakes. Electronic distributor. Change rear tyres. Front windscreen rubber and seal the other three. Wiper box gaskets. Uh, bonnet gaskets. The door window felts. Grease all the points. Grease and wrap rear springs. Wax oil into all cavities. Adjust tappets and fit breather type rocker cover. Now, I've already explained I'm going to be doing the rear axle, checking over the brakes because, well, that's a good piece of routine maintenance, obviously the rear tyres. The main ones to really point out is the electronic distributor breather type rocket cover. Be rocket? Rocker cover. Uh, these are modifications that I'm going to be doing going forward. Electronic distributor, which is electronic ignition, which will improve the performance and the fuel economy. And also a breather type rocker cover is allowing the engine to breathe out of the top, which is also a good piece of advice. These are things I'm going to be doing further down the line, however, I want to get the car back on the road first. And with that, we're done talking. Amazing, isn't it? I've waffled for so long.
And with that, we come to the end of the episode. So, sorry there wasn't much going on other than me talking, but, well, I've outlined what I'm going to be in the future. You're going to see a lot more content from me coming up because I'm going to be very busy getting this car back on the road. My plan is that I would like the car to be on the road for October because at the end of October is a big family event, unless it gets cancelled, and I'd like to have the car there for that. And it's going to be a lot of driving, so it needs to be ready. So I want to have the car with a full MOT for that. So you're going to be seeing a lot going forward. Now, I don't know what I'm going to be doing first. I uh, probably am going to be working on fitting the seats properly this time because they weren't fitted very well previously. And then we're going to be working on other things. I've got a lot to do. So, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I'm super excited. I haven't had the car for two months. I am very excited to get back to tinkering. So, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you. Oh, actually, uh, if you want to support the channel, uh, there is a link in the description. Uh, there's also a link on screen to something called coffee. Basically, it's, uh, imagine it like a tip jar. If you want to give it a bit of a hand, just drop a tip in there. It'll help me support doing this because I have to buy so many parts. Uh, luckily, I have now entered gainful employment, so that's something. Yes. Thank you very much for watching, and, well, I'll see you all in the next one, which should hopefully be soon, because I've got so many things to do. So much work. See you now. Thank you.